hello 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 welcome back welcome to if you're new my name is abria perry and welcome to my channel here on my channel we discuss all things finance lifestyle and beauty with a finance component and today we are going to be discussing thin styling thin style is defined as creating a lifestyle that is in accordance with all of your personal needs and all of your personal goals um, while also living in your financial boundaries. So for me, I'm a student. I understand that there are certain things that I can't just go out and do, but I do understand that there are things that I do want to do one day and I want to be able to do. So I try to create healthy financial habits right now so that I can continue those and one day be able to do the things that it is that I would like to do, um, whether it be purchasing a house or saving for X, Y, and Z or investing in this thing or that thing. So for me, I try to be financially savvy in everything I do and that has definitely come into my fashion, my lifestyle, my beauty, everything that I do, anything that I spend money on, which is pretty much every part of life, I typically fin style. So for me, that means saving on my lows so that I can stash for my highs. That's essentially my basic fin style concept and it can be used in absolutely anything, whether it be clothing, whether it be purchasing a home, whether it be saving for a new car or investing in something for your business um, or something that you just want personally for a hobby you oftentimes do not need to spend the amount of money on certain items that you do and if you were to decide to save on that low you could stash that money for your high which is what we're going to be talking about today um, in regards to saving and investing in pieces so let's go ahead and get it. So returning to the concept of a high versus a low. So a high doesn't necessarily mean something that is high value um, in everybody's sense of value, if that makes sense. There are certain things that some individuals value over other individuals. So for you, that would be a high. There are some people who, you know, they don't want a four bedroom home. They want a two bedroom home, or maybe they don't ever want a home. Maybe they want a, a, a condo or a townhouse, or they want a lease. Whatever that might be, that is your high and that's something that you decide that you want to save for, you want to stash for. In particular, today we're talking about our highs in terms of fashion um, and items, styling items. But I just want to keep, I want you guys to keep in mind that this concept can be used in regards to other things and that saving on an item in any category can allow you to stash that money for an item in another category they do not necessarily have to be related like today we're talking about fashion so i might say for example this t-shirt i got this t-shirt from zara it was twenty dollars um there are similar t-shirts that are designer t-shirts or luxury t-shirts that are a hundred dollars i didn't buy a hundred dollar t-shirt because i wanted to save that additional $80 and put it away for a higher priced purse that I want. So for me, this t-shirt would be a low and my purse would be the high. Oftentimes when I look at highs and lows in the fashion sphere, um, I consider my lows to be the items that I do not intend on keeping forever. They're not my forever pieces. They're not going to be something that is a part of my capsule wardrobe or something that I intend on maybe handing down or wearing often. So with that being said, I typically spend a lesser amount of money on them. Whether it means that I'm thrifting them, whether it means that I get them from fast fashion, or whether it means that I might be reusing things that I already have in my closet. I save on my lows so that I can stash for my highs. My highs in terms of fashion items typically mean items that I consider to be investments. I consider them to be investments because I'm going to keep them in my wardrobe for a significant amount of time or I can resell them. So they have a, re a high resale value. I know that they're going to have a high resale value. So for me, that's a high because although I might be spending a significant amount of money on it, I know that if I no longer want that item, it's going to hold its value and I'm either going to break even, which means I'm going to get my money back. I won't turn a profit, but I'll get my money back for that item or I'm going to turn a profit on it because it's going to 
resell for a higher value than I purchased it from. A good example of this um, would be designer purses such as like Dior purses or Chanel purses. Chanel purses in particular, specifically any type of Chanel flat bag, often has a high resale value. So if you were to purchase a bag, a Chanel flat, and you were to keep it in good condition, you would either break even or most likely turn a profit on those items because they just continue to appreciate due to the demand um, and the brand itself. So for me, that is an item that I'm willing to consider a high because it is going to not only be an investment piece that I like and that I know that I'm going to use often, um, but it's also going to be something that if I decided I no longer wanted it, it was going to provide me with some type of return, um, which is not often the case with a lot of items, particularly when it comes to trendy items or items that might not be made the best. You don't want to spend a lot of money on fleeting fashion items. So for me, I often consider my lows to be fin style finds. There are a lot of things that I either do not think are worth the money or they are worth the money charging, but you can find them at a cheaper price, if that makes sense. I grew up shopping at TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Nordstrom Rack, all that good stuff. And you can find really good items for really, really good prices at those stores. There are certain things that you just do not need to spend an exuberant amount of money on. So let's get into these tips. So, for me, when it comes to saving on my lows so that I can stash with my highs, the first thing that I like to do is make a list. So I like to list out my highs. What are the items that you want to invest in? So for example, I know that I want a Chanel flap. <laughs> we're gonna, we're just gonna stick with that example. I know that I want a Chanel flap. I used to think that I needed to be a certain age before I invested in a Chanel flap for myself. I just assumed that I would one day get a Chanel flap when I'm like this super grown up adult grown woman let me preface this by saying that I am 22 years old I'm a graduating senior um, from college and I'm a finance student which is why finance comes in to the twist for this so we're gonna stick with we're gonna stick with the Chanel flap as our example for this video because the Chanel flap I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how I intend to purchase a Chanel flap bag okay that's what we're gonna do. So list your highs. What are the items that you're looking to invest in? Again, does not have to be a fashion item. However, we are talking about fashion in this video. I know that I want to purchase a Chanel flap. Like I said, I used to think that I needed to wait until I was a certain age to purchase a Chanel flap just because I figured that's when I would have the money to do it and that's when I could really kind of justify having something that expensive or something that luxurious. However, I've now changed my mind and I've decided that I deserve a Chanel flap as soon as I can afford it. <laughs> Once I listed out the items that I really, really consider to be highs for me, fashion-wise, they're things that I'm willing to invest in, they're things that I know that I'm going to keep, they're things that are timeless, they are going to hold their value, um, and I will be able to either get a return on them if I decide that I no longer want them, or they're things that I just know I am always going to have. For example, I want to invest in a really nice wool Burberry long line coat. I know that a nice Burberry coat is going to be something that I will keep for years to come. I don't know if I want it in black, I don't know if I want it in camel, but I know that once I have that item, it's something that's not going to leave my wardrobe. Unless for some reason I can't fit it anymore, it's going to stay with me. And I know this to be fact because my mom, my aunts, they all have these beautiful long line wool coats from Burberry or even other brands, um, other luxury design houses that make really nice ready to wear pieces and they have had them for years and they hold up. So I've made a list. 
I've had this list. It's kind of a running list. It's been going for a really long time now because I love clothes. Um, and little by little, I've been procuring all of these items because I save on my loans specifically to stash money away for these items. I cannot stress this enough. If it is not something that you need to spend an exuberant amount of money on, don't. Or if it's something that you don't even need, don't get it. I try to be very diligent and very um, intentional with my purchases and not just go and buy something for the sake of buying it. There are times when you kind of get that itch and you just want to shop, but I try to limit that and really keep that to a minimum so that I'm not wasting money that I could be stashing for items that I really, really know that I want. The second tip is to make a plan. Make a plan on how you intend to get this item, where you intend to get this item from. Have an idea of who sells these items, how often these items go on sale, who's the best company to purchase the item from, if not from the designer their self or the creator their self. So, you know, you have department stores, whether they be Bloomingdale's, Nordstrom, Neiman Markets, who sell a lot of these designer items or who sell certain clothing items that might be higher priced. So have an idea of who sells these and who has the best policies or um, reward programs, um, who has the best uh, customer service, whatever it might be. Because when you're spending a certain amount of money on things there is a certain experience and it's like if you're going to a luxury hotel if you're going to a resort um the resort itself should not just be nice the service and the experience of the resort should also be equally as nice so keep all of that in mind rewards you know points all that good stuff that you can stack up and later use for another high is something to definitely keep in mind be patient. I cannot stress this enough. And this goes along really, really well with the idea of using resellers. When you go on a um, resale site such as Fashion File, Rebag, The Real Real, you have to be patient because they are not the same as a retail store where they have a hundred of one item. They are getting inventory as people are giving them up. So there might, they might not have the bag at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, but at 9 p.m. they might have that item. So be patient, continue to check back, and take your time when, it, when you're purchasing an item because oftentimes the price of things decrease, the um, rewards for certain items goes up. So if you are getting something from a retailer like you know Nordstrom or Neiman Marcus, Bloomingdale's, they have a lot of really great points program. So the worst thing in the world is to purchase something and then the next day they're having their annual sale or what have you they're giving double points and now you bought this item um, because you were kind of rushing into it and you didn't want to be patient you're already taking your time with saving for this item and stashing away from it so just continue to be patient once you do actually have the money to buy it that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to run out and buy it right away that is something that I learned the hard way um, just from being young and eager it's just like okay I finally have it I'm going to get it but sometimes it's still not the time for you to get it just continue to stash and be smart and you can will get the best bang for your buck again this goes with anything hunt for the deals I'm telling you guys along with being patient you have to be consistent you have to look for these items you have to explore all avenues of where you can get the items from and you will honestly find what it is that you're looking for or you're you can find a lot of things don't settle I'm just telling you guys this now don't settle just continue to look for what it is that you want at a good price and you will eventually find it there are some there are some times where I will say settle sometimes you might have an idea of something that you want but you don't exactly know what it is like you might be like "Ooh, I want a lady Dior mini right just vague you don't know what color you don't know what hardware you don't know what fabric you just know that you want that style of bag right if that is the case 
then sometimes you might quote unquote settle or compromise because you're open. That's not really settling. That's just kind of being open and being, you know, flexible, which flexibility is a great way to also get the best bang for your buck. If you do not have your heart set on something specific, but you kind of have this vague idea of what it is that you want and you know that you just love the make of such and such, you know, you love the quality of it, you love the designer, you love the shape of it, but you don't know exactly how you want it to look, you can sometimes come up with really great things by being open. So be on the hunt, be patient, and be open if you are not specifically attached to some particular item. Sometimes you can end up getting really great deals for really great items just by being a little bit more flexible with yourself. Having a designated place for that savings. I personally like to use Capital One for my savings accounts that I don't want to touch. So Capital One is a really great, I believe they're called the 360 accounts um, and you basically can stash money away but getting to it is not super easy. It's not insanely difficult but you can't just go on your phone and transfer and get the money instantly. I want to say it's like 24 hours. So with that being said, that can be a great way to save for certain items if they are big ticket items. Oftentimes, what I do is I'll save my money in that account and then once I have the amount of money that I want or that I need for a particular item, I'll transfer it over into a more accessible account. That way, if that item does come on sale on some of the resale sites like Fashion File or what have you, or even some of the first-hand retailers are selling that item, I have that money accessible to me. So I stash it away until it hits the amount that I need, and then once I have that amount, I put it into an accessible account so that once I find that item, I can go ahead and purchase it. So saving in a designated place is very important. And if you have the luxury of having multiple streams of income, which I highly suggest, not saying that you have to have a billion jobs, not saying that you have to have a super lucrative business, but if there's something that you do on the side, something that you make extra money from, just, you know, a little side hustle. We love a side hustle. We really, really do. Um... <laughs> If you do have a side hustle or you have those streams of income and you can designate one of those streams of income to stashing away money for something it is that you want for stashing away for one of your highs um, or whatever high it is that you're saving for, I highly suggest that you do that. That way you're not pulling money that should be going to something more important, if that makes sense. Like I have my stream of income designated for my living. I have my money that's designated for me doing everything that I need to have a nice place for my bags and shoes and clothes to live. In me, to live. I don't use that money for anything else. I don't use that money to get my hair done. I don't use that money to buy bags. I don't use that money to buy shoes. I use that money to live and that's what I use it for. I have a nice other little side hustle that I use to do things like put gas in my car and get a car wash and other little random odds and ends. And then I have my stream of income for my shopping habit. So once everything else is done, um, I use my stream of income for my unhealthy shopping addiction. Um, <laughs> I use that to buy my items, buy my clothes, and if there is money left over, um, usually I'll just put that into my other savings accounts. If I'm not buying anything that month, I'll stash all of that money into saving for my high. Because I do blog and I am a fashion head, I do oftentimes purchase items monthly. So sometimes I shop more than other, some months I shop more than other months. If I am not shopping a lot, like I said, I just put that money into my account to save for my highs, for my items that I really, really want, that I know that I want to buy one day, and that I know that I'm going to have for a long time. My last tip in terms of streams of income and purchasing items would also be to invest. 
um, income for me comes from investments and investing in things like stocks bonds um, whatever it might be I can do a whole separate video on investment vehicles and how I personally invest but for me I know that when I purchase this Chanel bag one day it's going to come from investments so I have personally set up in my mind that I am going to invest every month and eventually I'm going to take my gains from those investments and I'm going to purchase myself a purse with it but once I purchase that purse I'm not going to be in arrears because I'm not saving all of this money to buy this one item and then once I buy the item I have no money anymore that is not fin styling that is not smart investments if you can't buy something some people say if you can't buy something twice you can't afford it I say if you can't buy that item five times you can't afford it it might be it might seem a little steep to somebody but I don't want to be walking around with a three thousand dollar bag and I can't buy myself any lunch like that just doesn't make any sense and it's not feasible it's not smart it's not fin style you guys we're all we're talking about living a life in accordance with your personal financial boundaries not saying that you're always going to be in those boundaries if you fin style correctly you could you know expand your boundaries three times over so all of that is just something to keep in mind when you're purchasing these items be smart with your money be smart with what it is that you're investing in and I would love to do a um, video for you guys on investment pieces I intend to do one um, but when I do I just want everybody to keep in mind that what some people consider to be investment pieces of clothing and items are not the same everybody has different opinions and different thought processes on what they value and what they like and what's important to them so just keep that in mind when you are thinking about what it is that you want to invest in it's not going to be the same for everybody but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope that it was helpful and I will definitely keep you guys updated on the quest of procuring the Chanel bag. It will come. I'm absolutely positive. She's coming. She will come. But do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe and follow me on Instagram for tons more Fin Style tips. I do Fin Style Friday and just so you guys can see what I'm up to as far as fashion find styles, all that good stuff. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I have a goal of hitting 50,000 subscribers in 2020 so i would appreciate it so so much if you guys could help me out with reaching my goal by smashing that like button below i will see you guys in my next video and have a great rest of your day stay safe wash your hands just relax watch a movie because we are in stressful times right now but i hope that this video gave you guys a little bit of a reprieve in that you're thinking about what it is that you want to stash for when all of this is over thank you guys and have a good rest of your day